Hey, I'm Mill Factor, and I uh, put together this little performance using the Launch Control XL, and I'm pretty sure you've seen the video, and I want to talk about how I went about doing that. So let me walk through this track. Uh, I start off with just the, the sitar riff going on on channel 8, and what I really like doing is I just kind of like the beat and the vibe just looping, and then I kind of can just mute, uh, bring tracks in and out using the solo and the mute on the Launch Control. So I start the track off with having the sitar riff playing. And then I just go ahead and bring in the whole beat. That's tracks one, two, three, four, and five. By just going ahead and, and unmuting them at the same time. And what's cool about using it live is I can record all that while I'm doing those drops. So um, I can actually capture that whole performance uh, right then and there. It's, it's a really cool dimension to, to my workflow. So we, uh, I bring in the drums and then I start bringing in other musical elements. I uh, kick in the bass in here, uh, you know, start messing with the levels. I start doing some hard panning left and right to uh, some of the loop elements. And then I switch over to user mode. And I kind of mapped uh, the record arm button here in user mode to, uh, to record a clip for channel 6 with this, this cool little synth stab that I created that you'll find in, in, in the set. So I, um, what I do is once I hit that, it's going to record on the next bar. I perform that little lick and then just put the record arm to stop recording. And I can just go ahead and I'll tweak it back in factory in factory mode. So it's really cool. Right out of the box, when you plug this in, um, immediately it recognizes it's recognized by Ableton Live and it just snaps right to your session, which is great. And it's uh, it's set to factory mode. And then when you want to start getting to customizing uh, your launch control Excel, just simply hit the user button and then you're into user mode. And this can pretty much be mapped to anything you want. And so what I did for this session um, is I wanted to kind of have some freedom and control to do some really cool cuts and, and beat repeat stuff on the fly. So I mapped my, uh, my last fader 8. I mapped that to a crossfader of my Ableton Live so that when I go up, it basically will crossfade to my BQs. And then uh, I have these, these roll of knobs here mapped out to the beat repeat filter, uh, the grid, and then the pitch. So it gives a really cool hands-on approach to just kind of uh, performing while you're producing. I kind of always like that perspective when I'm making tracks. cool and one of the highlights of this device is uh, this device button and you press that and whatever track you're focusing on uh, if you have a device on it such as this track here eight uh, there's an auto filter on this track here on my little sitar riff so when I hit device button the bottom row goes from pan knobs over to controlling whatever device that I currently have highlighted so this is automatically assigned to the filter uh, frequency so I can automatically go to work on the filter frequency that's on the device. And if I want to go to another device, say a delay or compressor, just hold the device button down and just uh, press right or left to switch between devices. So it's a really cool feature um, about this unit.